you're at the high level for the more significant bits. In this short video we're going to be looking at the USB HID interface for um, USB HID keyboards on the VT132. The same interface uh, can be supplied with the VT132 designed for RC2014 or the VT132 standalone. So both these models now support a USB HID keyboard. The interface itself is this little red PCB and it comes pre-soldered with its own microcontroller. It's a CH559T and the firmware is already flashed on it and the only other parts on the board are a couple of uh, bypass capacitors. You also receive the Type A USB uh, socket and a six pin header, which is used for connecting this little red daughter board to the main PCB of the VT132. In addition to that, you'll need a few tools, uh, some side cutters, a bit of solder, soldering iron, and a little bit of electrical tape to insulate the back of the red PC board before it gets attached to the main VT132 board. So assembly is very straightforward. In simple terms, we're going to solder on the USB connect, type A connector. We're going to put um, a six pin header through the back here uh, and use that to attach it to the main PC board. But there's a few details that I wanted to share with you. So the first one is, we really want the underside of the red PC board to be absolutely flush with the main PCB when it gets mounted. And there's a couple of things that are going to prevent that if we just storm in and do this uh, by sort of, you know, following our nose. So the first thing is that the Type A connector has these relatively long pins and they're definitely deeper than the PC board. So when we put that through uh, hopefully you can get some idea that there's about one or two millimeters of those legs projecting through the PC board. So we want to trim them down before we start. Now that only applies to these four legs at the back of the Type A connect socket. Leave the two front legs alone and we'll see why a little later. We do want them to extend through into um, some receptacle socket um, holes that are made in the main PC board if that's possible. And it adds a little bit of mechanical stability. Okay, so first step is take a small amount, one or two mil off each of these legs, and check again that nothing's protruding through the red PC board. Yep, that's nice and flush. And it's going to be very easy to solder on the two power le uh, legs first. It's worth just getting something under there to balance the red PC board. And with the nice wide open holes around the power legs, it's very easy takes a reasonable amount of solder however, but it's very easy to fill those holes. Just make sure everything's flush before you proceed. And just keep checking that nothing's um, sticking up on the back there. It's a little harder to fill the other two holes just because they're smaller but you really shouldn't have any problem. Okay, nice and flush. Now you should get those two front legs just protruding through. And as I say, we want to use that to help anchor this to the main board. The next thing is to deal with this six pin header. And in the sort of as shipped 
configuration with the plastic spacer, these pins really aren't in the right place for what we want to do. So the first thing is that you want to push the pins right down, or push the plastic spacer right down, so it's hard up against one end of the pins. Just requires a little bit of force. Use a tool to get it started. I'm not cutting anything, I'm just pushing down on the black plastic using the edge of my side cutters here. And we just want to keep moving that plastic, that plastic spacer down so that the pins are flush with one side of the spacer. That way when we put it through the holes at the back of this little red daughter board, hopefully you can see there, there's no pins protruding out through the top of the spacer. Uh, they're facing all the way out the bottom. So the spacer's on the same side as the Type-A USB connector. Um, and we want to get that turned over and soldered into place. Like any multi-pin soldering, you just want to get the first one done, check that everything is still flush before proceeding, and then just a quick touch of solder on each leg. Don't hang around for too long as I just did on that one uh, because that black plastic spacer softens up with the heat coming through the pins pretty quickly. And you might just have to check that you've uh, got that all lined up and it's going to do the job. Uh, you may even need to resort to checking it with your multimeter for continuity. Okay, well that's the finished daughter board. Before we move on, uh, just to make sure that there's no electrical contact from these solder pads here and the solder pads that are on the main board for the original PS2 connector and its supporting resistors and it's exactly the same configuration here on the standalone we've got the pad for the PS2 connector and the supporting 2k and 120k resistors for the PS2 connector you don't want any of those put in we are going to simply drop this in place and solder it in. But to avoid any contact between the daughter board and those PS2 connector pins, just in case there's some sort of short that's going to cause a problem, uh, although I have assembled some of these without any insulation and it has been fine, but I recommend a little bit of electrical insulation tape and just cut a little patch small enough to do the job without sticking out around the edges and it's really just under the USB connector that you've soldered on that you want to insulate There we go. So with that in place, it's now a pretty easy job of putting that through the socket or the matching six pin opening on the board, getting it down in position, and then soldering the pins and cutting off the excess. And then my recommendation is, notice that we didn't yet solder the pin, two for pins at the front of the USB Type-A socket. If you leave them to the last step and with it in place on the main board, just apply, apply plenty of heat and run plenty of solder down through these two openings, not the big ones for the PS2 connector, but the two oval ones in front of that. Again, you can see them here. 
on the um, RC2014 board, um, then you'll get the best mechanical stability that you can uh, that you, you can expect from attaching the USB interface to the main PC board. So again, on the RC2014 model, stick it through, turn over, solder on these six pins and trim off the excess, and then run a decent amount of heat and solder into those two oval pads to just pick up the legs of the Type-A connector. If, it, if, that, if that doesn't really work, if it just keeps um, moving and breaking the solder, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think there will be enough mechanical strength um, in the connector at the back once it's soldered in place. But it just sort of given that those legs do protrude a bit, I thought it would be possible to pick them up there with some extra solder at the front edge. Well, that's all it takes to attach the USB interface to your VT132. It's the same approach no matter which model you've got. Um, just don't, uh, I haven't supplied you, if you've got the USB interface uh, in your order, I haven't supplied you with the PS2 components, so you shouldn't uh, run the risk of soldering in the 120 ohm and 2K ohm resistors by mistake. But if you do, just remove them. If you happen to find some in your own collection and solder them in, not realizing, just remove them and clean up the solder so that you can get these two boards flush together as much as possible. Well, I hope you found that helpful, um, and I hope you have success assembling your VT132 and enjoying your USB keyboard working with your VT132.